Hello everyone! We are here at Thor Park for our first ever visit. I have to say, seven big coasters and also uh, a lot of great rides, flat rides and stuff in this park. Plus it's Scarefest and I only have less than four and a half hours to get it all in. So it's going to be a very whirlwind crazy vlog today from my first time ever at the park. I might not even be able to enjoy it considering all that I have to do. Let's go into the dome and get in to Thorpe Park. First ever visit. First up is Walking Dead the Ride. And probably the last time that I'll have a chance to ride it as a Walking Dead themed attraction as that series has not been good for several years. If it's even on anymore. Yeah, nobody likes Negan. If you know what that means. Let's do Walking Dead the ride. We are at Merlin Park again, so there'll be very few, if any, on-ride POVs. We do respect the park's rules, in case anybody is curious. Let's not think about those first couple videos I posted back in the day. Okay, so we just got off of uh, the Walking Dead The Ride, which is, again, probably more suitable being in America, but here it is. And you know what? It's probably better that it's here because the theming in that was exceptional. Uh, nothing too crazy. And it also wasn't a wild mouse by any stretch of imagination. It was definitely a Vacoma family coaster. I enjoyed that sort of conclusion where it stopped next to those uh, house buildings and you kind of did this stop start, stop start as the car was trying to like get back up because the ignition was off. Uh, really quality sort of theming, not too scary or suspenseful. It was kind of like a ghost train on steroids. Now we might have a pretty decent day here without me having to do fast pass desperation. But we'll see. We're doing all the coasters first as mentioned and then we'll make our way. Hello. Hello. Freaky. about these guys actually covering the vlogs from my favorite. They are the scariest creatures you can encounter. All right, here they come. We gotta get out of the way. They're coming, they're marching. They're going the same spot as we are. Maybe they're coming on saw with us. You know who they remind us of? They're probably related to the corn stalkers. They're off. Where are you going? Sir! Ah! You going? <laughs> Today's plan is to do all of the coasters first and then the scare mazes once the atmosphere takes over because this particular haunt event does have atmosphere. But one thing I have been told to do first whenever I come to this park is saw the ride. This imposing structure. It's a gerst. I'll probably only do it once. As it's supposedly one of the most roughest gerst you can get out there. Oh, we have another encounter. They are coming on saw the ride with me. Gonna get away. <laughs> it's time for Saw the Ride, or so we hope. I don't even know how long the wait is. Oh, these guys will not let up. They are <laughs> they are ready, ready. Alright, we'll see them on the way out. We're going on Saw now.
unfortunately they're gone. All right, so that is Saw the Ride. To be honest with you, I enjoyed that more than Smiler. I don't know, there was a lot more to it. The inversions were very snappy. It wasn't even that rough, to be honest. That first underground inversion that you're not expecting reminded me a lot of Takabisha back in Fuji Q, Japan. In fact, this ride feels like a smaller version of Takabisha to me, uh, except for that heavy theming throughout, which was quite excellent because after that inversion, you have that crazy surprise element with the water feature, which I'm not going to ruin if you come here. I'm sure there's plenty of information about it out there, but that was one of the most creative elements I've seen of theming on a roller coaster ever. Yeah, it's a really good ride. All those countdowns leading to the next elements and everything, it's perfect. The way it was thought and conceived and actually executed, that's probably one of the best girths out there. I know I'm controversial in saying that, but that's just how I feel. Welcome to Thorpe Park. We're vlog bombing. Will happen a lot. Next up is Colossus, a ride that's been around for quite a while and used to have the inversion record. as a fairly significant wait, however. So hopefully it won't take too long to get on because we still have a fair amount of credits to get in. Saw and Colossus have actually increased, so I'm gonna go to the other side of the park in the hopes can capture a couple of shorter queues. School just let out, so I do anticipate it getting a bit busier in the latter portion of today. And we unfortunately can't stay the whole day today as we have one more event to do. Which means maybe not time for the sky swing. Fears? My fears. Y'all scared of me? Why y'all scared of me for? I love Lee. I'm I don't friendly. like axes. You don't like axes. I don't like axes. This is my lovely axe. It's a, how much this practice has she got about that? It's got no blood on it, so I don't know whether or not. I gave it a nice cleaning this uh, morning because I thought y'all. I'm going outside today. I thought it'd be best that I don't have my ex covered in blood. Oh, no, it's early yet, too. It's still very early. <laughs> That's for sure. All right. I like to use it later on in the day once I find my favorite blue dead blue. Well, that's it. We're going to have to visit you later on to see how many kills you I get. I think y'all should. It'll be real good to see. I might Take care. Like All right, we are off to the other side. We'll get some more action from the skier actors. I really will say I'm impressed already. The actors are out and it's a Tuesday. So, you know, you'd figure that on a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you'd have a full gamut of actors, but it doesn't seem like at Thorpe Park, they're pinching any pennies, for lack of a better expression. I'm yammering on. It's a crazy day. We're at Thorpe Park. I can't believe it. Let's carry on our journey. She is not happy to see us. The Amity High Sharp Witty Wise. Alright, we're out of here. We'll come back to visit these guys later. I don't know if they uh, are too keen on Canadians. It's time for stealth. on stealth in the can already and uh, yeah it was a great ride it is exactly what you'd expect from an accelerator coaster and ooh, I love accelerator coasters they're my really in my top three maybe all-time designs gotta love intimate and gotta love what they do 
two consecutive rides because the weight is only, basically it's a walk-on, which you don't really see here at Thorpe. So far this is working out exceptionally. Uh, we've already done half the credits here, and we're gonna do the balance now. So we're on our way to Nemesis Inferno. First we gotta make it past this high school crowd. surprised by all these palm trees. I didn't know that London was a tropical environment. It is not, but yeah, the uh, foliage is impressive. I will say I hope this doesn't change in the course of the next couple of hours that I'm here, but I'm already loving this park somewhat. <laughs> there are so many Burger Kings here, it's ridiculous. It does have a very American feel to this place, um, and also the crowd is of the age that you would expect for a park back home. But, that being said, it's better put together for most parks that I've been to in the States. The theming is still nice. The theming in each ride is exceptional. You know, it's not that world-class level that you get in Florida, let's say. But for a place just outside of London, doing pretty good so far. Inferno? It's not Nemesis now, is it? There really is nothing that can compare to Nemesis now that I've been on it. Um, I never really thought that this ride would be anything particularly special because it's only got four inversions. A loop, it's based on that original ride. It was good. Uh, the only thing that really the standout of it is that first tunnel leading you towards lift hill which is very unique for an invert or any roller coaster of any kind as you go into the inferno and the effects there are really good kind of remind me of wicker man though to be honest but this ride predates wicker man by many years so that's another thing entirely fright night's home of fear the scare mazes do cost an extra ticket However, the scare zones don't. And I'm here now at one of them, which is Death's Doors. I'm not entirely sure if you can shoot in the scare zones. However, it ain't got a line, so that means we're going in. And so is security.
times. I haven't been able to eat or sleep since and I can't stop cleaning. Uh, and there's plenty of room if you want to come to help. Farewell. You let me know. <laughs> Too early for death. We gotta get out of here. Farewell, death. Oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm surrounded. Oh. Saying ugly is actually a compliment for that one. We already know who's behind that door. it but uh, even the janitors here are zombies which is kind of effective or janitors uh, the, the maintenance crews and that have uh, scare makeup on too which is very effective and that's like small details like that show the difference between this event and Alton's that I was at last night which was nowhere near the same experience tidal wave behind me I know I usually do these giant waves. It's too cold for me to do that today. I was a soldier and did Storm Force 10 on my first day of this trip, and I'm still recovering from that, so I'm not gonna do that today, unfortunately. Oh, it's this one again. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Jesus. Uh, I've met him too. I've met most of these guys. They're off, oh, hello. <laughs> she wants me next. We have three credits to finish, one of which is on zero minutes and needs a bit of love. So we're gonna do the flying fish. Get on this family power coaster, two spins around, get our credit, and then get on the structure behind it. The swarm.
Catching fish is done. It was a decent power train, mine train with a fish theme, which is kind of unique and cool. Um, three spins around the track as well, so because it's uh, not so busy over there, they're good enough to sort that out. Looks like there's a fairly significant horror bar over here, or it's a private event, I'm not so sure. But I'm certainly looking forward to getting my last pint in the UK before I leave tomorrow morning on the Channel Tunnel for Belgium. You can probably guess where I'm going. for another scare zone, this time in the area of the Swarm, known as Survival Games. Now we'll probably check out some of this stuff later on too, when it's more atmospheric, because I've definitely seen this area used before for a scare zone rather effectively. We have one priority first, and that is, of course, the swarm. We'll see how this shapes up. These wing coasters from BNM, I've never really been a fan. I always thought it was something that I'd like, but the sensation just tends to be very lackluster. However, it does have this brilliant head chopper through the sign. So I've been on a couple now that have these cool head choppers, including X-Flight. This whole area is brilliantly devised, however, because it's very much a, uh, a heavily themed area just around Stealth, the last new coaster for this park. Well, for those of you that do know, the park is currently planning on building another coaster, hopefully in 2024, if planning permission is approved. station building for the swarm. sundown swarms lights are on the whole zone it's not actually a scare zone here there is a scare maze called survival games I might have some bad news for the mazes there's only three that I want to try because based on the invitation and my experience with that attraction at Alton I do know that 
They also have one of those here that's an audio only experience. And it's not worth the money. So I'm gonna try to do the three mazes that I can in the park, but I, they may be sold out of tickets. So I'm gonna go beg at the gate to see if I can get one more for myself at a trio package, get those mazes in. And then as far as that's concerned, that's it for Thorpe other than Colossus. This ride behind me is gonna change my mind about wing coasters because at the end of the day, this was a great ride. The theming, the package, everything about it. I don't know what it is. I did two backseat rides on both sides. Swarm, fantastic ride. Definitely uh, probably one of my favorite wing coasters based on that experience alone. Uh, yeah, it was just something a little different. Um, the theming probably adds to the overall experience for me. And I felt it, it was way more forceful than other wing coasters like Gatekeeper at Cedar Point, X-Flight, and many others that I've done in the past. Swarm, quality ride. I had heard from one of my favorite vloggers that this was their favorite roller coaster in the UK. I'm not so sure about that yet. Uh, wait till the end of the year to find out about that. Hit, hit. All right, we got our passes. The three individuals. We paid a bit because you would get a discount with your Merlin pass. However, that is till 5.30. So sadly, if I had actually done this at the gate when I came in, instead of running into the park to get my credits, I would have actually gotten uh, the best deal possible, which really is only, what, 27 pounds, he told me, for the three, so it would have been a pound off of each maze. I'm not doing the terminal, as I said, based on other reviews and also based on the invitation. Even though they tried to squeeze it into a four-deal package for 40 pounds, I'm not doing it. Instead, I'm getting my jacket because it's a bit chilly. We're gonna go back in. We're gonna do three scare mazes. Hopefully get on Colossus. And that'll kind of be the night here at Thorpe. Welcome to part two of Thorpe Park, the Fright Nights edition. We're going into the mazes. This has been a tremendous scare event so far. Walk down the center. And I've heard lots of good things about the mazes at this event, so I'm looking forward to it. We've done most of the scare zones already. We have a date with Creek Freak Canyon, of which I believe there's a shortcut this way. Bear with us. Once again, we have a haunt event that lacks fog and smoke. We have a ticket for Creek Freak Canyon, which is good for a half an hour. So we're gonna try to get on that now. We're literally taking the same path that we took at first walking into the park. Where Walking Dead is now on a zero minute way. Darren Brown's ghost train is coming up as well as the birthday scare zone called Birthday Bash. And they've had some pretty morbid birthday music going on in the background. And I'm not sure if that's because of uh, the anniversary of this event, or what? Enjoy a little bit of birthday bash while we roll by our... Ghost trains on a 35 minute wait. It is the longest wait of the day. It's being advertised as a VR experience, and if that is the case, then I'm no issues giving it a pass. What I won't be giving a pass is trailers, known as one of the best scare mazes in the country. Possibly, at least from a corporate standpoint. There are a lot of independent haunts that I was hoping to get on this visit. That sadly will not happen. But for now, we're going to go into trailers. It's based on famous movie characters of the horror realm. Dang it, I thought that that ticket or that line 
Dang it, I thought that that line was a little long. Um, but it didn't really matter because my ticket is actually for 7.30, which is an hour from now, or ish. So I'm going now to where I'm supposed to be going, which is Creek Freak Massacre, which fortunately is just down this way. Again, no mood lighting, no. I don't know what it is about these parks in the UK, but they just love generated lighting. And that just blinding white light is not adding to the effects of the scare zones at all. And I know that they've used fog at events here before and lighting as well, so I'm not sure what the deal is this year. It's not taking away from the event. Anyhow, let's get to what it matters. What matters is scare mazes. Freak Freak Massacre. My uh, delayed jet lag is definitely coming through in the commentary. Oh no, we met her before. Uh-oh. There will be problems with these ladies later. Uh oh. Does not like us, whatever. Okay, we are out of that maze. First one, and uh, that was really impressive. There's so much to describe about what was effective about that maze. The standout elements for me were the smell of gasoline inside. The chainsaws all have like a smell of exhaust, which really adds the authenticity, and you think that they're really like real deal chainsaws. That cage room just before you exit as well with strobe lights going off, you kind of really don't know which way to take. and. Uh, yeah, it's pretty intense in there. You feel definitely trapped. The people that were in there were not about doing the maze, which I thought was quite, kind of funny. Um, they were really scared, except especially that beginning part where you crawl into the actual maze itself from its introduction room. They're really about introductions here in the UK. Uh, so yet another great actor let us into the actual slaughter rooms itself. It's kind of like Slaughterhouse at Cedar Fair Parks, combined with that Texas Chainsaw Massacre theme. I gotta hustle. You'll notice I'm out of breath again, as per usual for my vlogs. And the reason why is because I've got eight minutes to get across to the Swarm Island so I can get into the maze over there, and then I gotta backtrack and come back to trailers. And then hopefully, hopefully, as it's on a really short wait, I'll be going on um, Colossus to end my night. Tag along! <laughs> We're back at the swarm. Not to ride it, but for survival games. for survival games was far too long and I have to make an executive decision and ah, if you're watching Thor Park hopefully you can give me a credit and I can get into that maze in another time maybe a couple of years from now because uh, yeah I'm not gonna be able to do it tonight I am going back to trailers to hopefully fit that in because I do need to leave this park as I have another big event that I definitely want to get to on time that is well, it's well known as basically the scariest event in the UK. As usual, I feel like I'm one of the scare actors with the amount of attention that I'm getting. Um, oh, still have to swallow that pill of not, that was 10 pounds wasted, unfortunately. So, we'll see how it goes.
with this last maze, and then we'll wrap things up. It's only going to be 50% of the scare mazes done today, although really it's actually 66% because one of them is in a maze anyway. All right, so just got out of trailers, and that was fantastic. In fact, I'll go out on a limb and say that was my favorite themed scare maze I've ever encountered. Maybe it's because I'm a movie guy, and I used to go to multiplexes when I was a kid, and that was just like a very inspired and imaginative idea for a scare maze. Oh, we got to jostle crowds. They're all coming towards the camera as usual. Uh, you figure that... Yes, vlog! All right, this vlog is out of here because we got to get out of Thor Park and get to Tully's to do their Scream Fest, which is apparently, as I said earlier, quite fantastic. And that's why we're making the executive decision to leave Thorpe right now. The clowns are out again. Happy birthday. Good night. All right, we're doing the usual trying to get out of the park. No one else is on the state of emergency that I am. Uh, yeah, excellent, excellent maze. Really, I'm gonna give that one a nine out of 10. It was that good. I think a little bit more polished with some of the set. I think it's the first year that it's been introduced to this park. So, understandably, it's not quite uh, like nuanced like some of the older scare mazes here. Of course, gutted that I didn't get in to the alien theme one over there. Uh, the lineup was just ridiculous uh, compared to the fact that I walked on to trailers. Uh, I hope that's not an indication of how good it was, because if that's the case, I'll definitely have to come back very soon to get that maze in. Quality mazes in this park. This is how it's supposed to be done. Really great event. Could use a little bit more atmosphere than it used to have before with fog and lighting effects around it. But outside of that, there's plenty to do. And I didn't even do all of it. There is, of course, a lot of attractions here that I did not get to take in today. Mainly flat rides. But of course, with this park due to have maybe a major attraction in two years, my next visit should not be far away. I gotta bleed on a little bit more about trailers as uh, the experience itself. You go into each miniature cinema and uh, there's a poster for the film that was originally playing there and it's just basically, a t each room is a take on the theme of the posters. Um, so there's, they're really like tongue-in-cheek and humorous, like Nightmare and Stains, something a little bit more local. Uh, really kind of well done. Not kind of well done, it was well done. Favorite room? It was hard to sort of like attach like theming for some of the mazes in there, but there was one room in particular where we were attacked by four clowns in a very tight space, which was really, really good. Uh, most of the people at this event are really anxious to get out. Now the big question is, is it a good value considering that you're paying basically almost 10 pounds even with the best deals for each of these mazes? Well, I'm not entirely sure, because I didn't do all of them, unfortunately. And of course, we didn't do Colossus today either. I was just talking to someone that said it's one of the most roughest rides in the UK. So we'll give it a pass. Till next time. Okay, everyone, that is Thorpe Park. My first ever visit, and a very comprehensive one. Sadly didn't fit everything in today. That is of course my own fault. For lack of planning, as per usual, but when you're visiting 16 parks in 10 days, it's hard to put it all together sometimes.